The Nook Inc. getaway package charter flight will soon be arriving at the deserted island. Hello and welcome to this Geeky Rummy virtual podcast. We've stolen Lee's Animal Island, Animal Island, Animal Crossing Island of Ferratopia. And joining me, as you can see, is Keith Bloomfield. Hello. And of course, Lee Price. And thank you for the donation Hi. of your room, Lee. Hi. Yes. This, I built the studio with my own two hands. <laughs> it's a how very are, impressive studio. How are we all today? Pretty good. Pretty good. Keith, you okay? Um, I think um, I'm quite I'm quite surprised at how um, nice Lee's Island is. He's obviously put a lot of extra effort in, yes, uh, mm-hmm. compared to mine. So I'm quite I'm quite uh, quite pleased that um, Lee's Island looks so so nice. Yes, we'll be running out later on for a bit of a fishing and butterfly catching competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I thought we'd just have a general bit of a chit chat first. Yes. So, what have we been up to in the virtual world of Animal Crossing and the real world over the last couple of days? I'll let Lee go first on that one. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> um, what, have, what have I been up to? I've, um, I've actually been uh, replaying some stuff because of video projects that I'm doing. So, I've recently been replaying through the original Last of Us. Yeah, all right. Because uh, I'm going to be doing a video on that to tie in with the release of part two, which is uh, another episode of Losing the Plot that's coming out soon. Um, yeah, I saw, saw that had been spoiled online. Yeah. Some, uh, lots of people annoying. Although the, the funny thing is about that is like loads of people got really <laughs> mad at the spoilers, and then they were all like, oh, I'm going to cancel my pre order, and Sony have t- just this week announced, um, yeah, the pre orders haven't been affected by those spoilers at all. Like, they're pretty much they're in line with yeah. what Spider-Man got so it's like well <laughs> yeah. good to see that people kicking up a fuss on the internet has achieved exactly nothing as usual <laughs> <laughs> no change from normal then yeah I mean like people getting mad about those spoilers obviously I'm not going to talk about what those spoilers are but like they're all things that they're just kind of been thrown out there without context and you don't we don't know what the game itself is going to be like and you can't have that yeah. experience until you played the game so all these people sort of saying oh well they've ruined this and they've ruined that it's like how do you know you haven't played it you've just read what someone on the internet posted yeah and you don't even know if that's true yeah i mean it's it's going back to the old what empire strikes back day and like the whole darth vader spoiler it's like without context it doesn't really make sense mm-hmm. but uh yeah i mean I've heard Last of Us is a great game. I'm not a PlayStation owner, mm-hmm. but I've heard that they're very good games. So, yeah, good I mean, replaying the original one, I'm definitely sort of. It's definitely interesting going back to it because it's been a good while since I last played it. Um, yeah, played a little bit of it like towards the tail end of last year just to get some footage for my top 100. But mm-hmm. now I'm actually playing through it again properly to just pretty much get the entire game recorded. Um, yeah. It's just there's definitely bits where I'm in, I'm kind of encountering things in a different way. So like there's a bit that was really tense the first time I played it, where you first encounter the clickers. So clickers are like yeah. the zombies that can they've got they're blind, but they've got really good hearing. And if they if they get you, it's like an instant kill thing. 
and there's like yeah. a subway area that you've got to try and sneak around that's just full of them and the first time I played it I was like it was like the tense most tense thing in the world and replaying mm -hmm. it it's like I'll just chuck a Molotov and they all run into it so <laughs> very See, different experience that's the thing with such a heavily narrative driven game is the replayability there mm -hmm. I mean because if you play something like well any most RPGs like Dragon Age Origins or Knights of the Old Republic or uh, Borderlands for um Fallouts, lots and lots of alternate ways of playing it. Mm -hmm. So there's different different roles you can take on. It's the whole thing about what Skyrim, where you'll be a stealth archer within 35 minutes of trying to play any different character in that game. But um, where it's something so heavily narrative driven, is that a bit of a problem? I mean, it can be. I mean, especially if you're someone who wants to like replay it immediately, I can definitely see there being a problem there. But there's plenty of narrative-driven games that I've gone back to replaying, and it's just like watching a really good film again, essentially. You know, yeah. it's you know you can still enjoy something that you've seen before. Um, so you, you know, it's like, do I want to sort of re-experience this story again? It's kind of the yeah. main focus of it, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the world's moved so much towards online play the last couple of years. I mean, mm -hmm. I know Sony's one of the ones that have pushed back for more narrative-driven stories. Mm -hmm. But it seems to be the Battle Royale is the flavour of the month at the moment, and everybody is forcing this whole epic online 50 versus 50, 100 to 1 mm -hmm. Battle Royale matches where it's all guns blazing and no actual... Well, the seasons, but no actual story behind the content. Mm -hmm. It's just all set pieces. And I, I do love a good narrative game, but I think there's a place for a happy medium. And yeah. it seems to be a lot of the RPGs have either got very heavily story driven or completely open world. Mm -hmm. And there's not much middle ground out there anymore. I think Outer Worlds is the la last game from the last six months where I probably think there's a proper RPG feel to it. And even that's pretty much just a fallout cloak if you pretty much at the it. same time though there was disco elysium which kind of does something similar yeah a lot of that is very dialogue driven though but i think mm -hmm. it is very replayable because just the sheer number of dialogue options and the sheer number of yeah. different ways to play mean that you can get a completely different story every time you play so yeah yeah, I think it's one of those where you got to punt out those narrative-driven stories unless you're on a console. I mean, Jedi Fallen Order, there's a big hoorah about having a new Game Plus mode coming out. Mm -hmm. But even then, it was crippled because so much of that story is based on you unlocking items on the way through playing that game that they've had to, like... You can have the cosmetics, but all the Force powers basically just get taken off you and you've got to replay the narrative story again. It's quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Keith, what kind of game were you, Keith? I mean, I used to be more uh, the kind of narrative-driven games. So I did play the original Last of Us, although I don't own a PlayStation anymore, so my interest in this one is less. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember being quite frustrated at times with it because there'd be certain sections that you just went, this seems impossible. <laughs> um, just because you had to walk across a room without making a noise and there'd yeah. be broken glass everywhere and, you'd, and it'd be really frustrating and it'd be just it would be something that was startlingly obvious but was really hard to see mm -hmm. uh, within the game and I kind of think a lot of the big games now get lost in giving you too many options mm. that there's too many elements so you could get lost in a, in a sidetrack without progressing the main game for weeks you could go away and do some stuff with that a little bit I did play the Outer Worlds um and again, that was kind of like, there was lots of side tracks that kind of were nice, but then you kind of go, okay, I've got, I've, I've forgotten where I am in the main part of the game. What, what What's the next thing I should be doing? Because I've gone off looking for this for uh, ages. Um, so I kind of, strangely enough, I kind of prefer the kind of sim quite linear things like Mario. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like Mario Odyssey is a great game because it's it's quite... There's lots to do, but it's quite a linear progression. You kind of move to the next, and the abilities you gain are instantly applied. Um, so there's something in a, the kind of straightforward nature of a Nintendo game. Um, yeah. That I quite like. I think Western games get too bogged down in trying to be too clever and do too much. Yeah, I think there's a lot of hub and spoke RPG models where you'll basically unlock a town and you'll be forced to do 
X number of side quests to level up to the stage where you can then go and unlock the next area and do exactly yeah. the same. I mean, Out out of Worlds was a pretty typical example of that. The whole original warp, um, the introductory level is just very much so complete all the side quests and do everything before advancing the main story. Yeah, or you get the complete opposite. Whereas I've no, I've no real interest in the core story of a GTA game. Yeah, but I'm yeah. quite taken when I watch YouTube videos of people just doing random things <laughs> yeah. that they've been able to do with the tools within the world. So well, it's kind of I've, I've no interest playing in a law abiding citizen. <laughs> yeah, so it's like that, that's quite cool that you, when you can just kind of go completely away from yeah. what the game wants you to do and do your own thing. That's mm -hmm. quite. That's quite nice. Quite like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is it is an interesting thing to see that kind of way of people playing games, not incorrectly, but on in their own way, yeah. and not adhering to the rules of the environment. Because mm -hmm. the thing is, with GTA, you can actually play it as very much a law-abiding system. If you're not playing the main quest games, you can just yeah. wander around, drive your car. Go fishing, go bowling, watch a movie, watch some TV. And you don't have to go out and murder somebody. Or and you can steal drive like following all the traffic laws as well. Yeah. Stop at all the red lights. It's tedious as hell, but you can do it. <laughs> yeah. And I think yeah. that that's the thing about instant gratification with games now. Just because games have guns in doesn't mean that you have to use them. I mean, the original Fallout was a great example of that, where you could play a pacifist run through the game pretty much without having to kill any enemies yeah i can see why something like minecraft became so popular yeah because it just gave you the tools although you got extra tools as time went on mm -hmm. i could see that there was you know there is some there is some get elements of that that, that I, I kind of I, I don't i haven't the time and the patience yeah to to play minecraft and and, and sculpt the world like some people have done mm -hmm. it's why with animal it's the same with animal crossing yeah, there's an an amount that I'm prepared to do, yeah. and then I can go and admire somebody else's island who's obviously spent hundreds of hours sculpting it within. But you know, I, the idea that Minecraft you can drop in and you could do a bit of digging and you could build a bit of stuff. Yeah, I think that's very appealing. Where there's not, there isn't really a point to do it other than to entertain yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that that works quite quite well. A game that has that kind of uh, format. And I think that Animal Crossing has that to, to, to a certain extent. That there's a set of rules by which you abide by and things you can do, but you could mm -hmm. not do most of them. Yeah. And just go around digging up stuff and catching birds and uh, catching um, insects and, and fish without really worrying too much about getting a five star island. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like. Um, but I think that's the beauty of having, still having at least three console and games manufacturers around yeah yeah they each, they each do have a very distinct set of games that come to them yeah i mean um, definitely nintendo has always been a first party champion yeah and, and sony have definitely gone more for as I said the single single more narrative driven stories yep. and microsoft have always gone for the more westernized games of pretty much guns blazing and stuff like that and i think yeah the amount of times where microsoft have tried to do japanese style games and they've just kind of massively flopped every single time yeah. because xbox sales in japan are so pathetically low because yeah the japanese just don't want to buy an american system because i mean i remember blue dragon which was a what a game they sunk a lot of money into it and they hired the guy from Dragon Quest mm. to do it. I think it was one of the 360 launch titles and it was kind of like mm. here is a Japanese RPG made for the Japanese market by Japanese people yeah. just on the Xbox and it barely made a dent in sales yeah. I think. I think that's kind of why they they cancelled Scalebound which was the thing they were doing with Platinum as well the big yeah. Dragon game and that just got they just scrapped that one well, we've got to remember that Microsoft is still pretty young to the video game industry compared yeah. to Sony and to a certain well, Sony to a certain extent, and definitely Nintendo, who've yeah. been one of the very they're a generation early. younger than Sony. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I, I initially I wasn't a big fan of Microsoft coming into the gaming arena. 
I, yeah. I wasn't a big fan of of Windows uh, as as an operating system and stuff as well. But I think what was won me over with Xbox a lot is their willingness to experiment and collaborate and yeah. and champion indie stuff because the th- things like Xbox Arcade I think led the way quite a lot to things like particularly the e-store the e-store is is now kind of yeah. a massive massive uh, resource for lots of games that just wouldn't get published mm-hmm. 10 years ago when it had to rely on a physical yeah. Um, release. I mean, I think that was a very smart move by Nintendo to partner up with Nvidia and basically much go on a reskinned Android tablet route because it pretty much bought the DS and the Wii in, well, even a little bit of the Wii U into one device. And it was kind of here is a great way that we can bring both of our key audiences together. Because that DS printed money for Nintendo for decades. I mean, with the Wii and Nint- Wii, Wii and DS era, they were coining the cash in, to put it lightly. Yep. Yeah. And but, I think uh, the, the Switch has been a remarkable success for them as well. Yeah. I think it was a risk, a risk at the time, but again, as a system, it works brilliantly. Yeah. And I, and I think that ability to dock it and wander around does yeah. suit a lot of people's lifestyles now yeah. i don't really have the ability to kind of play a game on the big screen all the time i've got mm-hmm. i've got an xbox connected to it and generally that's used just to play films and blu-rays yeah where being able to just pick up the switch yeah kind of sit in a different room for 20 minutes or whatever it is and and, and play a game or even is go great. And the garden I, and have a chill yeah. in the garden yeah mm-hmm. or if i want to kind of Big screen, it I can and I, I can get onto the television. Mm-hmm. Then I've got then I've got the ability to do that, and it's quite and it's a very robust system. It slots yeah. in, picture comes up. It's you know there's no messing around after after the initial install of the HDMI cables. Yeah, there's no technical, you know anybody could do it. Mm-hmm. And they moved to quite a robust platform because we'd have the Tegra. I think it was three generations of the Nvidia Tegra processor before the Switch came along, and because it is just reskinned Android that allows those indie games to port over so quickly, so easily. I think a few, a lot of indie developers have said this is the easiest console to develop for at the minute because it just, mm-hmm. you can build it in Android, build it in Unity, doesn't need masses and masses of talent and it allows you to be very creative and get your game, as you've said, Keith, onto the eStore very quickly. Yeah. And there is a lot of people out there who go to the e-store and don't even buy Nintendo first party titles yeah. as much because there's so much in the e-store that you can pick up. I think that's the only downfall of something like the e-store is this, it's it's a bit like being confronted by Netflix or Amazon. Yeah. When you go you've absolutely no idea where to start unless you've got an idea of the title that you want. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's hard to find something that I mean, might be a gem and I think I watch a few, quite a few YouTube people who are kind of recommending games that I've not heard of before. Yeah. And you kind of, and you get to see what they look like, and you think, oh, that, that looks good, and I'd, I'd play that, and that looks quite cool. And they do quite good sales. Mm-hmm. So again, you kind of think, you know, for a couple of quid, I can, yeah. I can give that game a go. And then you, you kind of realise who's good at doing it, and then you'll think, well, I'll stump up for full price for the next time. Yeah they put a game out i'll be i'll be interested in in playing that and I'll, I'll put a bit more money towards that yeah and i think as well with the e-store definitely there is quite a lot of shovelware to put it yeah more on there sometimes so you you have yeah. to have a good read and know what's coming to avoid the shovelware i mean but some sometimes there are ridiculous sales on 90 percent off on stuff mm-hmm. and it's there was always something on sale in the e-store. I know NBA 2K20 was on last week for £2.50 UK mm. pounds. So, and okay, that, that game is pretty much microtransaction city, but sometimes sometimes there's a really good bargain on there. And but it's definitely something I've noticed as well. Um, there's a lot of indie titles that have got releases of PC and Switch. Mm-hmm. Like simultaneously, there's an awful lot of developers doing that now, and like, you know, PC releases, well, especially Steam, is very easy to do for a lot of indie developers. But the fact that so many are 
pairing it with the Switch is showing yeah. just how easy it is and how how much Nintendo is supporting it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, would I say it's my favourite out of my two consoles, having an Xbox One X and a uh, Switch? I don't know. I'd say my Xbox is more for like gaming gaming and I'd say my Switch is more for a more casual experience so something yeah. like Zelda Breath of the Wild uh, Link's Awakening or even Animal Crossing something you can pick up for an hour hour and a half mm-hmm. have a bit of a chill session with basically yeah. just more of a if you haven't got time to sit there and watch your Xbox or your PlayStation 5 update and then download the latest patch mm-hmm. and then wait 20 minutes for the latest patch to install and then get into the game, and then actually be able to play your game. The Switch is a lot more well, pick up and play. Yep, I think they've really nailed that. Yep. I mean, out of your two consoles, which are your favoured ones? I mean, I definitely my PS4 is definitely my primary system, with the Switch being like just you know a very solid second system, which I mostly have for Nintendo first parties anyway. Um. But it is what you say about it being so pick up and play is true, because with the PS4 you, I have to sort of properly turn it on and, and wait for it all to boot up. Whereas with the Switch, I can just take it out of the dock and I'm pretty much straight away. Keith, in, in purely in terms of how much time I spend on it, the Switch is a clear winner on that mm-hmm. because it's just so easy to 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 use. This, the, the, you know, it's it's almost like having your mobile phone. You could pretty much have it in your hand, you know, with you all the time. Yeah. I think the other big thing for it at the moment is there's quite a few games that we can play as a family. You know, it's it's quite easy to just un, you know unplug the Joy Cons, and yeah. you can have three, four player games. Um, you know, we've we've got a Mario Party. It's not the greatest game in the world, mm-hmm. but it just means everybody can be sat in front of the telly and be part of it. And have an argument. One person's experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, on the Xbox, we've we've not got as many of things. We've got it's mostly quiz-based things. Yeah, you know, we've got some of the Jackbox games and stuff. Um, but there are, you know, there's there's quite a, a range of games on the on the Wii on the Switch that you know multiple yeah. players can play. You know, Mario Kart is is very straightforward. You, you haven't got a lot, uh, you know, I've got a lot of controllers. Yeah. Um, so it does make it quite interesting. And also, as I tend to seem to be playing more sociably through. The Switch, I don't have a massive amount of gamer friends mm-hmm. on Xbox, so I've not, I've never really kind of got into yeah. big, big say, multiplayer games on the Xbox where it's a bit seem you haven't got the chat, whether that makes a big difference on the Switch, yeah. but it tends to be a little bit easier to kind of like I was gonna play say, sociably. Considering how awkward Nintendo have made it to be able to find the people on the Switch. Yeah, with friend codes and as I said, and no like live service as such. I mean, the Switch Online, which allows us to do stuff like this and have this group chat, but it's kind of it feels the lesser service out of PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live, and it's very much Nintendo dipping their toe into the water and keeping it as available to everyone as possible without some of the issues that you might have with such as like Xbox Live and PlayStation Plus. The thing that's notable about that is um, EVO, the fighting game tournament this mm-hmm. year, um, did not have Smash Ultimate in it because obviously they moved the whole thing online. Yeah. And because this, the Nintendo online stuff is so iffy, they yeah. were like, we're going to leave that one out and we're just going to stick to like the ones that are on PC, PS4, yeah. Xbox, you know. Yeah, it feels like it's very much their first attempt at an online service. Even though it's uh, their third. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, throwing in the SNES and NES games is a nice little extra, but mm. having voice chat would possibly improve things somewhat. Jesus, right, just kind of wandering around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I stood up by accident. I got a bit of cramp in my leg there, so I just need to stand up for a second. Okay. Um, I, like, I like when you shuffle back in the chair, he pulls a face. <laughs> yeah. I'm not used to see. I'm not used to settees where I can't put my feet on the floor. It's very, <laughs> very weird. That I've, um, and also, also, I've been, I've been looking at the the, the, the camera. Um, 
Which is the wrong way around for you. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I was not pointing in the right direction. But that's fine. That's good. That's good. I just admire the uh, the thing. I, although it troubles me, I'm slightly worried that that giant Jonathan Frakes picture that's just just keeps like, the eyes follow you wherever you go. You know, I've, it, I've done it's my I've done full three six. My island is my three Jonathan Frakes. Yeah. <laughs> It's just it just keeps it just his eyes follow you wherever you go. <laughs> right, sure, spoiler. Yeah. That that that's that skeleton in the corner, that is Jonathan Frakes. <laughs> <laughs> we waiting for him to attempt to sit on a chair at some point. <laughs> right. Shall we go and do our fishing competition? Right. Yes. So you you'd kind of um set a rule thing for this, Ryan. So do you want? Do you want to explain? Do you want to explain how how we are going to judge this? Um... Right, because because there's all three of us on an island at once. I thought yes. it's possibly a little bit unfair if we're all trying to fish and have bugs and insects and butterflies all in one area. So what I was thinking was instead we go and see how much we can earn in this game which is basically mild capitalism the game so i thought we'd go and sell it off in nook's cranny and see how much capitalism you say <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i thought let's go out let's see how much money we can sell our stuff for yes. okay and how long are we going to give ourselves to be able to do this five minutes i think is fair okay, okay. so what i will say is if we head to resident services and I'll yeah. start a timer. I think that's fair. Oh, okay. And then it's every man for themselves for five yes. minutes. Have we got to be back at resident services before the five minutes runs out? Um, Shall we meet in front of Nook's Cranny at the end of the five minutes? Yes. Okay. I see Keith's got, already cheating by getting his... Uh... <laughs> I've got, to, I've got to figure out where Nook's Cranny is, actually. Where, where, where is it? This way. Everything, like, everything is in this plaza over to the right. Okay. So, so Resident yeah. Services is, is it to the north part of it, and then Nook's Granny is just south of it. So. Okay, so I've got... I've got I'm, I'm, where are we going? Okay, I found you. Okay. So we're meeting at Resident Services to start, and then we'll end at Nook's Granny. Okay. Cool. All right. I am getting ready photo. to start. <laughs> Do you get a group photo first? Sure, let's do that. <laughs> I'm gonna switch like keep the bag on my head. There we go. <laughs> I, I can't keep still, I've got. Uh, <laughs> can't keep still, I've got a bag on my head. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are we ready? Okay, yep, all good. Uh, what, cool. what you, why have you got, why have you got, what are we catching? Fish and insects. Oh, Fish both. Insects. Yeah. Okay. Just a okay. big free for all. And then whatever you can catch, and then who yeah. can sell it for the most? Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. So we'll meet back in Nook's Cranny, and then we'll see what everyone gets to sell theirs for. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I'm about to start the timer. Three, two, one, go. There we go. <laughs> and I've instantly, I've walked straight into a flower bed. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Oh, I've got stuck. I mean. I kind of have an advantage because this is my island, so I know my way around. See, I'm checking out the coastline. Ooh, I can see a big fish over there. It's also great because I'm the one recording this. Everyone gets a tour of my island in the process. Oh, I come on, this is not good. Jonathan Freaks. <laughs> I haven't oh, gone in that on. direction yet. Why, why do you turn fish when I put the bait in front of you? <laughs> You're using bait? No. Ooh, that's good. I like that. That, that. I know that's not a very good fish. That's not very expensive. Oh, got a flounder. This is where someone just catches a whole bunch of sea bass and nothing else. <laughs> Don't you mean a C plus bass? Take we're not doing shell collection either. No, no shells. No, just fishing, fishing eggs. Bugs only. What I've realised is that because I've got the sand down on my system, <laughs> it, makes, it makes it slightly tricky to catch things. It's all on visuals. I just realised as well. I don't really, I don't know what your, the geography of your island is, Lee. Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying. It's like well, I've just I have the advantage on the stretch of coastline. 
and I found one fish. <laughs> it's a big one. This is not going well for me at the moment. I've got a feeling that I've got a sneaky suspicion that Leah will, will do well at this. Yeah. So what are you talking uh, about? Oh my god, come on. Oh, right, okay, I can see. Oh, right, here you go. Where's the oh, fishy? Right. What fishy? Right. Yeah. I'll just follow Lee and then just pinch his, um, pinch his, pinch his fish. All that effort and it was a sea bass. <laughs> <laughs> At least it was a sea plus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Right, so I've so far, far managed to get two fish. This is not going well. I mean, well. I've got a higher number of fish, but they're all bad fish. Hope I have enough space. Leave my fish alone. <laughs> Poach the fish. Poach the fish. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm going to run off. No, no good. Oh, there's a fish. Okay. We're approaching two minutes. This is not, I've not seen many insects though, which is I've interesting. Seen no insects. Considering all the flowers scared, on your scared them all off. One. Aiming the, casting the rod at the minute is my issue. But I line it up perfectly and then the fish moves as I'm lining up the shots. No! 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 I, I had to switch over to my net and the bug flew away. <laughs> over a river. Oh no. Right. Come on, fishy. Take the bait. No, don't chase islanders. That's no good. You cannot catch them. <laughs> don't hit my villagers with a net. Get the fish. Go on the fish. No! Don't turn Ooh. around! <laughs> it's a shark. Oh, have you got something with fins, Lee? Yes. Oh, if you've got if you get a shark, then you you've you've cracked it. I got a sucker fish. Oh, that's alright. They'll do. How do I get down from here? Ah, here we go. Oh, right. Let's let's, oh, Lee's tiki bar. Right, here we go. <laughs> We've got 30 seconds to get back, so... Oh, we got to go yeah. back now? Yeah. Unless okay. you get a fish in the next 30 seconds. I'm not going to do it. Okay. Can't see any. Going to have to run back. Mm -hmm. Oh, where the heck is... Oh, where am I going? Okay, follow Lee. I can't, I can't do it if I follow Lee. <laughs> I'm just there is a path, a fish. Keith. I, I did see an come insect, on, though. Come on, get a fish. Come on, come on, come on. Quick, go. I've got a horse mackerel. Eight, Ooh. seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. picture of Jonathan Frakes. One. Okay. <laughs> didn't do particularly well in five minutes there. No, I've got four fish and you guys just, like, completely... <laughs> but it's, yeah. not the, it's not the quantity, it's the value, yes. Ryan. Right. Yes. The value. As I have okay. the least, shall I go first? Yes. Okay. So we're all going to go in the store? Yes. Yeah. I'll let you go going first. Come on! <laughs> all right, we're going to oh, have to be go. truthful now, because you won't be able to see how much we're selling our fish for. No, you? I know. Shall we take screenshots to prove our uh, <laughs> sale value? <laughs> I mean, I don't need to, but all right. <laughs> I will do for um, for authenticity. We can we can I can pop that up. We can pop that up on the screen yeah, to show. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I have an olive flounder, a crucian car, a tilapia, and a horse mackerel. So I'm betting all my money on this tilapia. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that'll do you. That'll do you some good value. Just running the numbers. Da -da -da -da. One thousand nine hundred and ten bells. Really? Yeah. Nineteen ten. For that price, I'm gonna pass. 
<laughs> Mainly because I don't have a tilapia on my island yet, so I need to give it to Blathers. <laughs> I don't think I've caught anything here that I don't have normally. Right, so, okay, oh, okay, here we go. Ooh, what have we here? I'm impressed that you've travelled all the way to our fair island. What can I do for you today? Well, I would check turnip prices, but I'll do that later. <laughs> so I am going to offer a dace. That's not very good. A catfish, a sea bass, a zebra turkey fish, a black bass. Catfish is pretty good, I think. And a firefly. So he reckons they're all fine looking things. And I am getting a total of 2,640 bells. Okay. Which I'm going to sell. Because I don't need them. I'm not going to sell mine because I caught the sucker fish and I need that, so. <laughs> Let's see what we've got. So. Interrupt, interrupt the trade. <laughs> so we have. I caught two fireflies. Zebra turkey fish, a sucker fish, a tadpole, sea bass, and two dace. Oh, okay. <sighs> Here that, we go. That's, Here that's we go. Clearly, yeah. <laughs> that's going to be the 3,500 mark, that is. Okay. Three thousand five hundred amazing. Well done. What a pretty good estimation there as well. I mean, yeah. I think the, the fact that you knew the layout of your <laughs> island helped immeasurably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seeing as I, I spent the first thirty seconds like stuck behind a rose bush. <laughs> uh, yeah, you you fell into my trap, key. Yeah. <laughs> well done, all. Congratulations, yes. Lee. But mostly me, because I won. I pretty, I pretty much bought a new rod for this. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> I've stormed off. <laughs> okay. Oh, Lee, I haven't given you your present yet. I just realised. Consider this my prize. All right. Oh, I've got something for you as well. Yeah. I shall put my wand away. There's a drum set that will work no. quite nicely. I think you'll enjoy this item. They even wrapped it professionally. It's nice. <laughs> it's a butter churn. <laughs> <laughs> A drum set and a butter churn, Lee. That's just what, what every work boy together. wanted. I'll find, a pl I'll find a really good place for both of them. They'll work together. <laughs> I didn't have a salt mine, so I thought a butter churn is about as close as I can get. <laughs> Where to now, Lee? I think we should head back to the studio and continue the show. Back to the studio. And the house room. band is now playing a selection of medleys from Taylor Swift. <laughs> this is her latest release on Marimba. Unfortunately, I do not know the names of any Taylor Swift songs. Um, so we're going to switch now to Nirvana and Smells Like Teen Spirit. Here we go. I have a technology update for you all. It's been a while since I've done one. But I thought, as we're into a new generation of PC building, probably probably a good idea to uh, update you both. Gents, have either of you ever built a PC, by the way? No, but I did look at a list of parts once. Yes, that's, have you about, that's about as far as I got. I've had to disassemble one and reassemble it with extra bits, but never kind of like from scratch. Right. So, I'll... I shall explain. So... There's two major companies out there for home computer usage nowadays, which is Intel, which everybody knows about, and AMD. So AMD have had a, f had a decade of poor CPU design, to put it mildly, where they were pretty much completely out of the running, so everybody's home PC was pretty much Intel. Uh, since 2017, with the launch of the new Ryzen series of processors, which now they're on to the third generation of, um, they've been doing a lot better. So Intel still leads the way on pure gaming performance if the three letters F, P, and S are all you care about when it comes to computing, 
But um, Ryzen PCs are pretty much, if you want to do any kind of multitasking, any kind of Photoshop, uh, video rendering, developing your own games, audio mixing, it's all gone AMD's way at the minute. So Intel have just released their 10th generation of the Core 2, of uh, the Core series of processors. So Core i3, i5, i7, and i9. And they're pretty much the same technology they have been for the last four years, which is they're stuck on the 14 nanometer processor uh, die. So they keep refreshing the same processor and over and over again. Whereas AMD are just about to release their fourth series of Ryzen processors, which are on the seven nanometer generation. So they're much, much smaller. But um, so there's a new series of processors coming out. And from what leaked benchmarks have been, they look to be pretty damn good. So I am considering building a new PC for the Geeky Premier Studio. Um, but so I'll probably be going AMD. With that, there is a new generation of GPUs going along as well. So NVIDIA, who we mentioned earlier when we were talking about the Nintendo Switch console, are the marketing leader for discrete GPUs and PCs. And AMD also have their hat in the ring as well, because they bought a company called ATI many years ago. And they also do a range of uh, graphics cards, which are the Radeon series of cards. So, you can either pick up a new NVIDIA Ampere series of GPUs that are coming out more towards the end of this year, which will be replacing the current RTX and GTX series of processors, or there'll be new AMD Big Navi, I believe is the name of it, series of Radeon cards also coming out soon. There's quite a lot of interesting stuff going on in PC building at the moment, so... I would suggest not building a PC for the next three to six months and seeing what comes out. So that was your boring technology update. Of <laughs> I can see how building a PC is is quite interesting mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm always curious about the internal workings of things. It's one of the things I quite like doing is taking yeah. things apart and putting them back together again. I think, because I'm not a PC user and mm -hmm. I've, no, I've no need to kind of have a, have a gaming PC that, is running as as well as it can possibly do. I've always been a, left, a bit left behind by um, specs for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know the difference is when it comes to comparing what's in my Mac compared to what somebody's running in the PC. Yeah. Um, but um, it's quite good. And I, I think if you if you have the ability to kind of build your own, so it suits your needs, mm -hmm. it's it's a great way of being able to do that because a lot of things now are kind of sealed units. Yeah, most tech, most other technology doesn't give you that ability to switch out. Yeah, I think parts, PCs, and possibly um, digital cameras are the last two bits where you can freely customize your technology. In a digital camera, if you go for a DSLR or mirrorless, you can you can do stuff like swap the lenses out, upgrade the batteries, different viewfinders, stuff like that. But a PC is probably the last bastion of truly customizable technology yeah so i don't think i don't think there's a, any need for somebody who just does spreadsheets to be able to run you know yeah. the, the hottest um <laughs> liquid fueled graphics cards mm -hmm. uh, but then if you're if you're doing a lot of, of gaming stuff and i think that that kind of thing is for esports players yeah those abilities to tweak your system mm -hmm. can make the difference between being able to win and being able to lose, especially if your response times on your graphics cards are yeah. good, mm -hmm. yeah. that mm -hmm. that that is going to give you an advantage straight away. So I can see, you know, something like um, uh, Insomnia, when yeah. people are bringing their own, bring your rig, um, yeah. things. I think that m would be maybe slightly more interesting if it wasn't about. It was more like a car show, <laughs> and pe people just had the had the sides of their computers open. <laughs> and you could go around and, and kind of like go, oh, so what have you got there? And how have you tinkered that together? Yeah. So I, that's one of the kind of things I like. I don't drive, but mm -hmm. I've always been fascinated by tinkering with cars. I've watched yeah. shows about tinkering with cars, and I kind of miss that. I do the maintenance on the household car yeah, but I mean, without driving. But I kind of miss that idea of like, you know, being able to tinker things and you, you could kind of make stuff 
yeah to, I mean, to do things with it i think especially if you're a content creator so you yeah. like, you mix your own videos editing your own audio putting mm-hmm. stuff on youtube knowing the inside of your pc and what components are in there is a great advantage to how to use your technology possibly so nvidia graphics cards have cuda cores on it which can actually be used for streaming so this is like rtx voice which is a new thing they brought out with the rtx series of cards where you can now yeah rtx cards where you can like use some of the CUDA calls when you're not gaming to reduce the lag on your voice or even when you're gaming just use some of your graphic graphical processing to help the voice in uh there's a lot of things you can do with streaming as well with nvidia cards i think there's a few applications that can built in i would like to see schools that do teach coding Mm -hmm. do a similar thing with the hardware yeah and Mm -hmm. and kids are building their own pcs because I think as as important as it is to know how to program them for them, yeah, I think having an understanding of what that then is then going to run on mm-hmm. is, mm-hmm. is is as as vitally important that kids understand the, well, the hardware I mean, as much as the. I software. did look at something like that when I did A levels, yeah, because I took IT um, A level, and there was an aspect of that, but like the parts and stuff were so old at yeah. the time that it was would not have been relevant. I today. think yeah. Well, I, I think one great idea would be, and it's really an expensive way to get into computing, if there is somebody you want to start putting technology together, is look at Raspberry Pis. Yeah. So they're not a typical Windows system. There's lots and lots of range of a Raspberry Pi out there. Go from the Raspberry Pi Zero, which is, I think it's less than £20. And you just need... Yeah. And it's got the RAM on it. It's got a system on a chip, basically. All you need to do is put, you, put a power supply on it. Uh, you don't even need a case sometimes. Put a power supply on it. Plug it into the wall and you've got a pc running plug it into a monitor uh there's a raspberry pi zero w which a lot of different applications are using which has wi-fi built in and bluetooth so you can use that as a little standalone system uh raspberry pi have just released a 64-bit os which is raspberry pi os 64 rather than raspbian which is the previous name but they're releasing and just brand new uh fifth generation or fourth generation but fifth generation really uh raspberry pi which is 64-bit, and I think it's got 8 gigs of RAM is the option it comes with. So it's a very powerful little machine that comes in a very tiny box. I think what we need with those kind of things is like a celebrity endorsement, because it reminds me of when I was a kid, when you could buy the Magnus Pike electronics kit, Yeah. and you had the, the, a motherboard that you could wire up in different ways to make like a transistor radio, or you could mm. power a little um, kind of calculator LCD screen. Yeah, I so have I one of those room. Like 15 in one science kits. Yeah. So I think there's, there's room for a Professor Brian Cox um, <laughs> build your own PC or whatever it is. Because I think that, that kind of celebrity endorsement would make people, you know, if that was available at Christmas for, yeah. you know, 50, 60 quid, which you could do with a, a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. You I can know, definitely see slap, some slap Brian Cox's, like yeah, that. Slap, yeah. slap Brian's yeah. picture on the cover. Daro Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody yeah. Like, he'd, he'd do it. He would totally do it. <laughs> But I, th- I think it's something that's very much missed because when I was a kid, I was we bought the family PC, which was a big expense at the time. It was Windows 3.1. And I was always tinkering with it. I upgraded the hard drive twice. I swapped out the CD for a CD rewriter. It, it started off as an AST computer system and ended up some like horrible Gestalt entity of something. <laughs> I think I even upgraded the processor in it twice, but... People encourage not to do that now, and all technology is seen as disposable, as you see with mobile yeah. phones, laptops, yeah. tablets. They're very user inaccessible, and I think yeah. the the PC market, especially the right to repair, is still very much of a force of you can do what you want with it. Yeah, and you can even do water cooling, hardline tubing. Uh, AIO coolers, all the different choices you have. And there's a really great website, which is uk.pcpartpicker.com, which actually you can go on to have an idea about what your kind of system is. There's loads of pre-built systems that people have loaded up, or you can go on there and completely customize your own PC. And it's really good because it will tell you what's compatible. So if you select think, a Ryzen. I think that's what I looked at a, a little while ago when I was looking at getting a yeah. Proper desktop. Yeah, I mean, if you want to, I definitely pieced it all together on a 
yeah. a site of some kind. So it's probably something like that if it wasn't directly that site. Yeah, and it's very smart, so you can go on and pick if you choose an Intel or an AMD processor. It'll only mm -hmm. give you AMD-compatible motherboards, and it'll say these motherboards are compatible. Uh, it'll tell you which types of RAM to use, what size PS PSU to use, and it'll be very clear to say these parts are co compat these parts should be compatible, or this might need a BIOS update, or this might need to check, might need to change to build your PC altogether. Like it'll only recommend if you have a full size ATX motherboard, it will completely get rid of all the mini ATX motherboards. So you make sure that you got the right size of case. Very good website. And as I said, yeah. there's lots and lots of pre builds on there of lots and lots of price ranges so you can see what other people have put together. So you can put together a system and get voted on. And it's gotta be all better for the environment in the yeah. long run when you're not dumping an entire system you're just switching out yeah. the parts that you need and yeah. then you know upgrading a, a, a disk driven hard drive for a solid state hard drive and stuff like that you you just yeah. you just upgrade the bits that need doing rather than an entire thing which might do what everything you need to it's um, it's it's like servicing a car yeah you got yeah. oil in you got to change the tires occasionally you got to put new brake pads on yeah it's exactly the same thing. A PC is a living thing, really. And yeah. you keep it upgrade and keep it. I don't. Maintained. I don't think many people would buy a car if you had to buy a new one every time the wheel went flat. Yeah. I think that would certainly make change people's attitudes towards it. Um, I, I, I think Tim Cook is listening and making notes as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> the iCar. The iCar. Yeah. Oh, you, oh, you need the iCar warranty plus package for that. <laughs> Once it stops going, you've got to get a new one. <laughs> There's no refilling. There's no recharging. Once it stops, that's it. You've got to get a new yeah. one. But I'm planning to build a new PC over the next couple of months. So if there is interest, I'll probably put up together a video of us building it. And you, we can all. I think, I think in you should. Room. I think you yeah. should. I think that would be quite useful just to see. Um, yeah. Although it's unlikely that I would do it myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be quite interesting to see what goes into it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's insane how compatible some stuff is as well. So my original case from twenty years ago still fits every modern motherboard. It, it's ridiculous mm -hmm. how compatible and sensible PC building can be sometimes. Yeah, but yeah, I'll I'll try and keep the rainbow vomit RGB down to the minimum as well. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be the new trend in PCs now. If it hasn't got 256 million colours running at all times, it's not a fast PC in some people's Well, that's the thing that kind of annoyed me while I was trying to pick parts out, is I, I just want, wanted to get, like, a bog-standard PC, and there was all this stuff about, like, oh, you can basically make it look like a sports car, and I'm just like, I don't care. <laughs> I just want it to be a box that sits in the corner. I'm not even going to look at the actual PC. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do. I do sometimes look. I see them in the backs of TV shows. I do sometimes think about getting hold of an old Mac. Yeah. The kind of all-in-one units, the very, very early um, Macintoshes, and just just having it work. You know, monochrome screen and all the rest of it. But you know, not much oh. use to anybody. But look, looks looks great. Yeah. There's a whole subset of people who buy very old hardware. And cases and put very modern PC bits inside it. It's yeah. they're called sleeper PCs. So yeah. you'll find like an IBM PC AT original box, and somebody will cram like a GTX 1070, 2070, and a Ryzen thirty three hundred processor in just like just because it's the art of the possible with some people. Some people yeah. there's a massive mm -hmm. PC modding scene, and people custom cases, custom water loop calling. It's insane how deep the rabbit hole can go with building your own PC. But yeah, so I'll do that. I'll when I build a new PC, I'll put a put a video together and we can all join in. Yeah, if you can do one, if you can build a PC that's on a hydraulics so it can bounce, that'd, <laughs> that'd be cool. <laughs> no, I think Keith, that's the butter passer from Rick and, Mus Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do, pass the butter? Oh no. <laughs> Right, thank you for joining us on this geeky, brummy special here in Animal Crossing land. Keith, where can we find you online? Uh, I, online, you can find me at hardluck underscore hotel on the uh, Twitters. 
<laughs> and um, without the hard, without not without the hard look, without the underscore, uh, pretty much everywhere else. Yeah, Lee. Just hotel and everything else, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, where can we find you online? Uh, you can find me on YouTube at Bob the Pet Ferret. I also have I'm on, on Twitter under the same name for updates for the channel, and I'm on as the Cheap Ferret for personal things. Just general tweeting. I'm on Patreon above the pet ferret as well, mm -hmm. and yep, that's that's where you can find me. Yeah, please do go and check out Lee's video gaming YouTube channel. There's some really great stuff on there, especially his uh, "Why It's Rad, Why It's Bad" series and mm -hmm. his series all about losing the plot, which is yes. cooking into video game plots and seeing new new episode of that coming very soon if it's not already out, which mm -hmm. is going to be on Portal. Awesome. And you can find me at Ryan Parrish on Twitter, and you can find us all at geekybrummy.com, where you can see Lee's gaming rounding update of the week and Keith's comic updates every week. And don't forget the Geeky Brummy YouTube channel, which you're probably watching this on, I assume. If you are, please kick the bell notification and like and subscribe and tell all your friends. Nearly at 100 subscribers would help out, please. Uh, but for now, that's it from us. So bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye.